Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today I'm here with Jack from Reef Galleria Aquarium and Cafe in South Melbourne and we're going to be dipping some corals to fight acro eating flatworms. So what do acro eating flatworms actually do to a coral? Okay, so acro eating flatworms basically live and eat, live on your coral and they'll also consume the coral tissue. This is the reason why I'm teaching you how to fight it, so you can identify it in our shop or in other shops. Um, or your own tank. Or your own tank, absolutely. Uh, or on, on your own coral that you've just bought and you're inspecting. Um, these are all telltale signs that the, the coral will have come with acro eating flatworms, SPS in particular. In this footage, you can see the bite marks of the uh, acro eating flatworms. They look like little circular discs. Um, you can see evidence of them grazing here. Um, and the worms themselves on this uh, Dallas Acropora are actually pretty large. They're, they're quite easy to see with the naked eye, but certainly um, with this close-up footage, you can really get an idea for what they look like. Uh, first evidence of uh, acro eating flatworms is usually uh, like a, almost looks like a, a slow RTM of the bottom of the coral. They're usually on the underside because they don't like light. Um, so you'll see like a bleaching of the bottom of your coral. Um, and then a closer inspection, if you lift up the coral, uh, you'll either see brown like freckles, which are the eggs, or the acro eating flatworms themselves. Okay, so we've got some eggs underneath the microscope at the moment. Um, they were scraped off the colonies that we're currently dipping. The eggs can be a lot harder to spot uh, because they are much smaller generally than the worms themselves, and often the uh, acro eating flatworms won't lay their eggs on live tissue, so they'll only lay their eggs on the, either dead parts of the coral or the surrounding rock around the base of the coral. Um, it's also, also common for them to lay eggs on the underside of frag pods. But fear not, because there is a treatment and a very effective treatment for acro eating flatworms, and that's what we're doing here today in this bucket. So how are we treating them today? Okay, so thanks to a gentleman called Bill Morgan, we've uh, he's come up with a a particular potassium chloride dip that you can use to uh, get rid of the flatworms. It does not treat their eggs, however. So, in terms of combating the whole uh, cycle of acro eating flatworms, we're using, today I'm using three grams of potassium chloride per litre of tank water in our dip. So, here's the dip here. So, you can observe the dead flatworms in here. Um, on the bottom. This dip is about 30 minutes. So that's 3 grams per litre of tank water, 30 minutes, and you can see that the worms dropping off. So the reason the worms die basically in this dip is potassium chloride, obviously a salty um, powder. When the worms enter this water, all the water inside the worms goes out into the to, to, balance out the salty environment basically. I think it's called osmotic shock. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, the that's worms what I'm looking for. Osmotic shock. Yeah. So this will kill most invertebrates. Um, but yeah, the osmotic shock, you can see them all dead at the bottom. They even uh, actually tend to crumble and, 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 and shatter, if you will, um, from it's, this solution. It's safe for the corals. Yes. Yes. Yeah, safe for really the yeah. So this Dallas and, and these other corals in this bucket will be perfectly fine after this 30 minute dip and they'll be acro eating flatworm free with the exception of the eggs. So how are we going to get rid of the eggs that we were filming before? And those are just on the base of this um, uh, Dallas here. So in terms of the eggs, um, unfortunately there's no 100% guarantee of getting rid of them, um, but we will just scrub that particular area or any eggs that we see with a toothbrush um, and then rinse this toothbrush in the, this solution. If, if we wanted to be more aggressive, we could probably use the bandsaw and actually just cut, and cut off, off that whole section yeah, and just yeah. throw it out. But yeah. it'll obviously depend on the coral that you're dipping, whether that's an approach that you want to take or not. Um, but yeah, if you use a toothbrush and take your time and really inspect the area well, it, there's a good chance you can get rid of a lot of the eggs. And then I would get in the practice of dipping them weekly for about a month in order to break the life cycle completely. Um, because, yeah, as you said, you're not going to get rid of all the eggs with your uh, toothbrush because they can be on the rock work, they can be on places you can't access within the tank. So just basically waiting for those eggs to hatch. 
the accurate eating flight worms will almost always be on the coral. There's no need for them to get off the coral unless they're obviously laying eggs um, because they're literally living on food. Um, so there's no reason for them to really get off. So most of the accurate eating flight worms that will be present in your tank, about 90% will be on the coral anyway. So um, routine dipping, I would say weekly. Um, some people do more regress of three to four days, um, but I found it just be a little bit too stressful and plus being in a storm, there's a lot of coral to dip if that's the case. Um, we try and do a routine weekly dip of all their SPS. And if you're trying to eradicate acro eating flatworms in the home tank, after a couple of weeks of dipping and then not finding any flatworms coming off your corals, you can be fairly sure that you've had success. But there's also some other things you can do just to sort of make sure that they um, they don't come back or if there are any survivors in there that their numbers are kept to a really small and low level. And that's some particular species of fish that are known to eat acroiding flatworms. Uh, for myself, I have a six line wrasse, but a lot of other species of wrasse will also uh, have a go at them. But just like people, fish sometimes do have preferences for food and it's no guarantee, like fish are all individuals, right? And so some of them will eat it, some of them Definitely. won't. Yeah. Also, uh, our marine biologist Brett gave me a white paper on this particular subject. Um, and the paper found that uh, Redline Cleaner Shrimp had a 9% success rate with eating the acro eating flatworm eggs. Six Line Ras had a very high success rate with consuming the adults. Peppermint Shrimp had about a 60% success rate with the eggs. Um, and there are a few other species in that paper. I'll try and find it and we can maybe put it in the description or something. But uh, uh, that was a really helpful paper. But yeah, Redline Cleaners, I was pretty surprised about eating the eggs. Awesome. Well, I think uh, with this customer's Dallas, it's going to be pretty accurate eating flatworm free in about now, five yeah. more minutes once, <laughs> yeah. once this dip is finished and once we scrape off those eggs. And then it'll be good to go back into the holding tank. But uh, thanks for all that knowledge today, Jack, and it's Problems. been really good talking about this. And I know acro eating flight worms can be a really stressful thing for many hobbyists out there, so I hope you found this video helpful. My name is Marcus. And I'm Jack. And you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now. Awesome.